At this time, let's begin today's event, Eight Ways to Beat Next-Gen Insurers, sponsored by Nexio and hosted by Digital Insurance. At this time, I would like to introduce your moderator for today, Pat Spear. Pat, you have the floor. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks to all of you for joining us today. Our topic resonates with the bulk of traditional insurers, that is, how to meet the needs of today's digital customer while competing in a next-gen insurance marketplace environment. I want to remind our audience that, as Jessica said, we're going to save some time for Q&A at the end of this live event. But if you think of a question at any point during our experts' presentation, don't hesitate to type it in the queue. We're going to try and get to as many of your questions as we can. Our expert speaker today is Uri Kogan, Vice President of Product Marketing at Nuxio. Uri leads the go-to-market strategy and execution for Nuxio and specializes in growing enterprise software with transformative marketing strategies through analytic rigor, end user empathy, creativity, cross-functional leadership, and tenacity. Prior to joining Nuxio, Uri spent eight years at HP in marketing leadership roles for digital experience technologies including launching new and transforming legacy businesses and improving supply chain performance. Earlier in his career, Uri was economic consultant to utility industries and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uri graduated magna cum laude in economics, and here's a fun fact, opera performance from Northwestern University and earned a marketing and technology MBA from Chicago's Kellogg School of Management. So we have a lot to cover today, so without further ado, let's get started. Uri, you have the floor. Great. Thank you, uh, Pat, for the introduction. I promise I won't sing to you guys today. Uh, let's get right into it and talk about uh, our agenda for today. I'm going to start by covering uh, what eight things next-gen insurers are doing differently and explain how you can do those things as well. We'll then talk about one of the main obstacles to change that always comes up uh, when thinking about new ways of, of doing things and how you can overcome. And then we'll look at three of the main areas of uh, typical insurance firm, uh, policy admin, and see how some of the eight ways that I've covered can be reflected in new approaches to those core business processes, and then finally, of course, we'll get to your questions. Uh, so please do uh, give us, send us over your questions, and we'll make sure we get to as many as we can, uh, and anything that we don't answer, we'll, of course, we'll, we'll make sure to get back to you on. Uh, so with that, let's uh, jump right in. So here we go, number one. So the first one I want to really cover is first principles thinking. And it really makes sense to start any discussion about thinking different with a quote from none other than Steve Jobs. He said that you don't want to be trapped by dogma, which is, the res which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Like any business with, with decades of history, insurers develop habits that are the accumulation of wisdom and experience and incremental change. The solutions insurers create based on that accumulation of knowledge, might do the job, though they're likely inefficient and expensive. So if you find yourself asking, does anyone have any idea why we're doing this? You've probably fallen into a trap where iteration has been confused with innovation. We're in a world now where iteration isn't good enough anymore. It's important to go beyond reliance on tradition and consider what you're doing for customers from a fresh perspective. To truly become a next generation insurer, you must go back to the fundamental assumptions or first principles to develop new products and solutions unencumbered by the past. Start by asking yourself these two questions and you can rework the problem from the ground up. The first question is, what business problem am I actually trying to solve? That's the first principle you should be going back to. Or even, if somebody were inventing insurance today, what would it look like? How would it be different? Would we still use forms and contracts? Would we still perform underwriting and claims processing in the same way? Of course, I'm not suggesting that you reinvent an entire highly regulated industry at once, but it is critical to ask these first principles questions to ensure that you're not trapped 
by your company's own historical practices. The second way to think different is to reflect on how your customer has changed. Today's insurance customer is hyper-connected. They live their lives in an omni-channel, always-on world, interacting via mobile phones, laptops, wearable devices, connected cars, cloud-based voice services like Alexa or Google Assistant, and apps like Facebook and Instagram. Because they are constantly connected, modern customers expect immediate responsiveness and gratification. Now, many insurers think that they found a solution to this, which is to deliver a mobile app. But just putting a new veneer on top of an antiquated set of business applications is not going to meet the demands of today's digital customer. There's an old business adage that says, if you automate a bad business process, all you end up with is an automated bad business process. And this is equally true for customer interactions. If you build a mobile app without a modern infrastructure and information systems to support it, it's like building a house on a crumbling foundation. The results are often disastrous, not innovative. You end up exposing system weaknesses across new channels that demand more of legacy systems than they can deliver. So before you launch mobile apps and new functionality, you need to have a firm foundation. And that means a robust architecture of high-performance information systems that are capable of scaling to the demands of the modern insurance customer. This modernization is going to give you a foundation for game-changing innovation. The third way to think differently is about what value you're actually providing. Today's customers want more value and a more diverse one-stop shop set of offerings, many of which are not a core competency for insurers. Insurance customers want additional products and services that are adjacent to their insurance needs and augment their personal lives, like guidance, advice, and access to products and services that enhance their overall financial well-being with offerings that shift as their life goals evolve over time. They want services that are more deeply entwined uh, into their lives, like travel and leisure services, budgeting, discount buying services, and money tracking. But it's also true that extending your value prop doesn't have to mean that you're creating new offerings from scratch. Many of these capabilities might already be available through other service providers. Just take a look at the way that airlines have bundled cars and hotels into their booking process without having to go into the car rental or hotel development business. They're able to give customers a seamless travel experience and increase their share of a customer's wallet. So you don't need to create adjacent offerings, but you do need underlying systems that make it easy to integrate across the value chain. And this is another weakness of many legacy information systems, which are often over 20 years old and were never designed to connect to third-party systems or providers. The fourth way to think differently is about how your company can distinguish itself competitively by moving from a focus on price and product to experience. Now, in some sense, there's nothing new about this because Nationwide is on your side and you're in good hands with Allstate and State Farm is there, all of these are very rich and long-standing brand associations that tell us that our experience with these brands will be good when trouble strikes. But it's also important to recognize that this goes way beyond a marketing slogan to how we actually do business as insurance companies. When it comes to customer experience, no one has created more disruption across all industries than the top tech companies like Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook. They have redefined the customer experience, raising the bar for all customer interactions. Meanwhile, most insurers are not there yet. McKinsey and Company reports that a typical insurance carrier today delivers customer experiences via separate functions, managed by different executives with different goals and metrics. And from the customer's perspective, the experience, meanwhile, is often just a single journey. They're not likely to draw a sharp, a sharp distinction between the agent and the claims adjuster. So if your customers aren't making the same distinctions as you are when they shop for insurance, it makes sense that tackling customer experience as a single journey will not only increase retention and profitability, but more importantly, ensure your insurance company's longer-term viability. 
Now, delivering a positive customer experience means that you need to start by having a 360 view of their journey, not siloed views through disparate business functions. The first step toward that is breaking down those organizational barriers, both the ones that prevent a customer-centric focus and those that make it hard to find information scattered across the organization. Now, the fifth way to think differently is to reflect on who your competitors are. Customers no longer differentiate between vertical industries in the way that they did in the past. A positive experience received in one market is expected across all markets. So as an insurer, your competition is no longer just the next insurance company, but rather all companies that exceed customer expectations. And if you'll indulge me, I'll tell you a personal story that explains this. I recently bought this Tesla, but I didn't notice a minor cosmetic issue until a few days later. I made a service appointment, I got there 10 minutes early, and even before my original appointment time, the service advisor had already come over, taken a look, scheduled an appointment for a mobile tech to bring a replacement part to my house to fix it right in front of my house. Now, this wasn't an insurance example at the time, but a few weeks later, Tesla started to sell car insurance for its own cars. And I, because I'd had such a great experience with them uh, through the service experience, I decided to take a look, and I was able to sign up in less than five minutes. So I would have never given it a second thought, but for the fact that my experience with them was already such a positive one. But this isn't just about me and my own experience. Google's head of industry says that companies need to commit to speed. Insurance is a highly regulated industry, and it's not easy to move quickly. But the fact is, consumers are moving at exceptional rates. So the companies that are going to stand out are the ones that find ways to move a bit faster at the pace of the people they're insuring. Number six on the list is about smarter, not harder, and how to think about your changing workforce. Many of you are familiar with the fact that the majority of the seasoned underwriters and adjusters are at or near retirement age today. That means insurers have an opportunity to rethink core business processes, not just for speed, but for efficiency as well. The knowledge base for decision-making is dwindling, with fewer people entering the insurance workforce. The quality of underwriting decisions and the ability to control claims leakage are both suffering. Also, claims frequency, severity, oversized verdicts, and fraud are all on the uptick, driving up case loans. The amount of information that has to be evaluated by both underwriters and adjusters has exploded as well, increasing the time to underwrite policies and process claims. So what do you do about this? Well, there's a saying you should never let a crisis go to waste. And you can actually turn this HR problem into an opportunity by capturing decades of intuitive knowledge with machine learning, artificial intelligence, and other technologies to order, in order to reduce or completely eliminate these low-value and mundane manual tasks. These AI-powered automated business processes can support initiatives like straight-through processing. And this isn't about completely removing human touch points from all insurance interactions. It's really about augmenting human interactions so that those uh, interactions are high value and are focused on the most important customer touch points. The seventh item I wanted to cover was how we embrace information everywhere. In the poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, Samuel Coleridge was describing a thirsty sailor on a ship at sea who said, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. And this idea also applies to the insurance industry's inability to deal with a flood of content and data pouring in and out of their organizations every day. Where is it? How can I search it? Will I find what I'm looking for? How do I make it actionable? The majority of today's insurers struggle to answer these questions. Looking ahead, that ocean of information is not receding. In fact, it's not even high tide yet. Many insurers now understand that a single repository level of control is often out of their hands. New and different repositories of information arrive through mergers and acquisitions, or through point solutions and executive mandates, or simply through the desire of the business to keep certain types of information at arm's length from each other. Rather than fighting the proliferation, 
Next generation insurers look to federation as a means of connecting the business to the data and content it requires wherever it resides. They also look to enhance and expand the descriptive information associated with that data and content in order to gain greater insight and better serve their customers. And by the way, when you do this, you make much more data available to the AI models that we talked about a moment ago. The last topic I want to cover is how you think about your IT systems architecture. Insurance companies struggle to keep core systems relevant and up to date in response to pressures from a changing industry. Many of your core systems are well over 20 years old and they were never designed to be flexible or adaptable. These expensive, difficult to maintain monolithic systems force insurers into periodic lengthy migrations in which entire core systems are upgraded, replaced, or rebuilt from scratch. This is the source of enormous disruption for insurers. And in, more, and in most cases, no sooner has that system been replaced than the insurer finds it is once again obsolete and the costly process repeats. Instead, we suggest that you assemble systems from individual functional services. This Lego-like approach provides an expedited way of not only quickly modifying existing applications, but also quickly assembling new applications you didn't even envision when the new model was adopted. Applications built on services exposed through standardized programming interfaces allow you to effectively future-proof your business apps. As an individual service becomes obsolete, you simply replace it with minimal impact to the overall system and far less disruption to the business. Furthermore, because you've decomposed business functions into granular services, you can reuse them in new applications, greatly reducing the amount of time needed to deliver new capability. So with that, we've covered eight ways your, your company can think differently in the vein of next generation insurers and how you can beat them. But it's not news that traditional companies struggle to lead with innovation or even to follow the lead of next generation insurers. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's not a lack of desire, nor in many cases, a lack of funding and resources. Still, traditional insurers often feel overwhelmed by the prospect of modernizing their systems. With long company histories, insurers often feel they can afford to take a wait and see approach, moving reactively only when business models are at risk. Well, guess what? Now we've waited, and we've waited, and we've waited. And we've seen that the digital age of insurance is here and it's not going anywhere. Doing nothing is no longer an option. So let's look at that legacy burden that leads to business stagnation and what you can do about it. The main reason that upstarts are able to get a toehold in these markets is that they've been able to create all their processes and systems with modern technology. When you're an organization that has been part of the market for generations, maybe over a century, you don't have the luxury of starting. There is a way things have always been done, and that means you have a burden that these new companies don't have, the past holding you back. The problem with replacing legacy systems don't work. It's that they do work. In fact, they work so well at first that over the years they become entrenched. There are so many financial services companies still running on Windows XP, even though Microsoft stopped supporting it five years ago. So even though these systems become entrenched for a good reason, legacy systems and modern business applications just don't play well together. If the security vulnerabilities don't set your teeth on edge, the cost of custom work and inability to take advantage of new software features will. Legacy systems remain in place because it's the path of least resistance in the short term. Replacing the plumbing costs more than plugging the latest leak. But as challengers flood the market, Traditional insurers have no alternative. They must rebuild with modern tools to support the fast-moving digital age of insurance. Now, when your legacy systems were built, the best practices in software development, the goal was to incorporate every conceivable function into a single monolithic code base. Now, as financial services organizations try to integrate with APIs that extend their value proposition, they're struggling to make their own systems communicate. Extending that communication to third-party providers can be even harder, almost impossible. And then there's a the problem of sheer quantity. 
Information resides all over the organization in volumes, types, and sizes never seen before, much of it coming from some of the world's 5 billion mobile phone users, a mostly mobile consumer base now, adds over 350 million photographs to Facebook every single day. They add 18,000 hours of video to YouTube every hour, and they text nearly 13 million messages every minute. These problems are why modernization requires a platform-focused approach, not a product-focused approach. A platform can connect diverse sources of information and integrate with internal and external systems with a Lego-like ability to simply attach what's not working and attach a new component in its place. So now that we've looked at eight ways to think differently and touched on how to overcome the legacy burden with a platform approach, let's take a look at three core insurance processes and how they might look different in a modern platform enabled world. First up is policy administration. With legacy systems, manual processes, paper files, and scattered information make Amazon levels of responsiveness all but impossible. Rapidly evolving customer expectations mean that retention depends on eliminating long hold times, callbacks, and snail mail processing. Next-gen insurers give customers wow moments by, adopting te by adapting technology to modern needs. For example, number one, they integrate phone systems to allow call center operators to instantly know who's calling with details on screen and ready to use. Number two, online forms make use of existing data. They're easy to use, they're mobile friendly, and they don't require you to re-enter known information. Third, Omnichannel policy maintenance provides customers with consistent communication via phone, online, mobile, and mail channels. Fourth, version control enables easy tracking of all changes to policy documents and supporting materials. Five, self-service policy maintenance empowers users to take more control over account details offering the ability to edit addresses or modify policy preferences. Six, automatic resource allocation guided by machine learning distributes tasks to the best resource based on availability, skill set, and priority. Seven, dashboards and analytics provide instant real-time feedback on individual policies, the whole book of business, or any level in between. And lastly, AI-driven decisions to suspend, hold over, or accept policies can be issued automatically or forwarded to relevant staff for approval. Next, let's take a look at underwriting. I already touched on my experience with Tesla, and I'm sure that many of you are familiar with companies like Lemonade that promise an insurance decision in mere minutes instead of weeks. When applications involve too many steps or long waits, Digital consumers who are now acclimated to customer experiences based on instant gratification will just abandon the process and move on to another faster insurance product. So the move beyond traditional underwriting requires moving to a process that is conversational, that is automated, rather than one that's form-based and manual. Let's take a look at what that process looks like reimagined from the ground up. Number one, automated systems gather as much info as possible from existing sources within the organization, reducing the requests for applicants to resubmit duplicate information. Secondly, other supporting information is integrated automatically from public sources like social media, open data projects, state DMVs, and banking institutions. Third, artificial intelligence monitors compliance with underwriting standards and instantly provides recommendations for accepting, rejecting, or amending the application. Fourth, process automation. Automatically forwards underwriting decisions to the best underwriter based on availability, skill set, and authority limits. Fifth, underwriters get a 360 view of all policies and coverages currently in place, as well as the policy being requested and receive an automatic recommendation based on overall customer value. Sixth, 
real-time automated monitoring of the book of business via dashboards and management alerts instantly validates the mix of business and identifies potential issues. Seven, analytics automatically flag any cause that would prompt the insurer to cancel a policy within the limits put in place by the state regulators. Eight, automatic workflows communicate underwriting decisions properly within the organization as soon as they're made. And number nine, integrated insurance, uh, integrated document composition engines automatically generate the necessary documentation required to bind the policy. Next, let's take a look at claims. Insurers today must manage information they never planned for when they built existing claims processing systems, like dash cam footage, pinpoint weather reports, and so much more. Now insurers can create a connected, user-friendly claims experience that works faster, makes customers happier, and reduces claims leakage. Imagine the claims process today's technology makes possible. First off, after detecting an event associated with damage or loss, a connected car or home or wearable device automatically creates a first notice of loss. Upon receiving the first notice, automated systems dispatch emergency services like medical, towing, and even notify emergency contacts if required. Third, the system assigns a claim to an adjuster automatically based on skill set, availability, or any other variable. Fourth, Claims automation generates a default electronic claim file automatically with drag and drop placeholders for required documentation. Fifth, the insured receives automated notifications about the claim's progress. Sixth, chatbots collect critical information from the insured at the time of first notice and AI determines which policies and coverages were in place at the time of the loss. Seven, automated straight through processing handle claims that meet certain criteria, while human attended workflows begin from more complex claims. Eight, AI initiates automatic investigation, initiation, and fraud detection scans using techniques like sentiment analysis, link analysis, and predictive modeling. Ninth, the insurer, sorry, the insured uploads documentation with a mobile app and AI files documents like police reports or attending position statements with the correct claim. Tenth, claim adjusters now use new sources of data to determine fault like weather, road conditions, maps, and social media. And lastly, funds transfer automatically once a settlement is achieved for a faster process. Now we've taken a quick tour of eight ways to think differently about your business and to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the next generation insurers. We also looked at how you can overcome the burden of legacy systems with a platform approach so that you can storm the hill of innovation and growth. Policy administration, underwriting claims, three of the core business processes in insurance, and how they can be reimagined in new ways to serve customers better. With that, I want to thank you for your time and I'd love to turn to your questions. I see we already have some that have come in. So Pat, back over to you. Thanks, Uri. Yeah, I appreciate this. This is a lot of helpful information, thinking about this as a platform, obviously. We have quite a few questions in the queue, so um, I'm gonna try and get to as many as we can here. Okay, so the first question is, do you have any insight into how this can work on the agent side? Do agents get a view into the Nuxio interface or is this something just for the corporate office? Sure, thank you to whoever asked that question. It's a great question. Um, <clears throat> one of the critical aspects of a platform approach is that you can actually build many different applications and interfaces on top of the same data flows, including apps and user experiences that are specific to each role that you need to serve, like agents. In fact, you can also deliver these experiences and, these, and this information inside existing applications so that your agents or any other kind of user can continue to work in the tools they are already familiar with if those tools are good experiences that they like and want to maintain. 
uh, going forward. Okay. Yeah, and obviously um, the, the idea is that most of these attendees have a very large distribution network, and so having that information is really critical. Okay, here's the next question. Uh, do you have some quick win projects that can help help us convince others in our organization who may be resistant to some of these shifts from traditional ways of doing business of the value of modernization? So they're looking for quick wins that they can reference um, going forward. Sure. There's no question that doing a, a wholesale transformation, modernization of your legacy information systems is not a quick win. It's a, it's a journey. It takes it may take you years to do that, um, but there are certainly steps along the way that can be faster, easier, and um, and generate a lot of value. One example of that might be a bursting AFP files. For those of you who aren't familiar with AFP, it's a uh, legacy format developed maybe 30 years ago uh, for storing uh, basically customer records and uh, templates and formatting those. Uh, into printable files so that if you're running a, a huge printing factory that's producing millions of statements every month, uh, you're feeding that and you're feeding those high-speed printers from these AFP files. Mm -hmm. And these AFP files uh, were great for, uh, for driving print streams, but they also run on mainstream that cost a fortune, and the data inside them and the individual customer record is basically trapped inside them. That makes it really hard to comply with regulations like GDPR or the recently passed equivalent in California that require you to be able to find and delete customer info if requested. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, Nuxio has a solution with one of our partners called Profit Technologies uh, that we call CCM Gateway or Customer Communication Management Gateway for Nuxio that lets you burst these giant files into individually stored PDF statements that you then store uh, in the Nuxio platform. And then you can manipulate those PDFs, you can serve them to a customer individually, you can extract data from them and deliver it in a mobile app if you want, uh, or, or any other experience that you want to deliver. And of course, since you're managing them individually, uh, should you need to delete them or move them, it's very easy to do that uh, without having to uh, deal with this massive uh, print stream file. Okay. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. Okay, so um, here's a question. I'm I'm a little confused about this one, but I'm going to read it as it is. We've heard a lot about your vision, but I want to know whether this is actually something. Oh, I see. I want to know whether this is actually something anyone is actually using right now. Uh, do you have customers in the insurance industry who are already doing this, or is this just a vision? It's a great question, and I think it is uh, absolutely fair to be uh, a skeptic. Um, the answer is for sure yes. We have many customers in the midst of these kinds of transformations, and actually, just uh, last week, one of the main, uh, one of the biggest PNC insurers that I mentioned earlier, I can't tell you which one, but one of them, uh, just signed up with us last week uh, on a major ECM modernization program that includes the platform for the enterprise with an initial focus on policy administration and underwriting processes uh, and a, a migration of, I think, well over a billion uh, documents that they're planning. Wow. So this is not at all a pie-in-the-sky uh, idea. This is very much on the ground happening today at uh, many insurance companies. Yeah, that's good to know. You know, and I'm sure you would agree, it's not easy to get budget consideration uh, without – um, some sort of proof of concept and some sort of way forward that proves that, you know, this is a very viable and yet critical element to be considering. So, okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, I, I will say on the budget point, uh, on the budget point, just to, sure. to touch on that, it is not uncommon for folks to want to do pilot uh, projects mm -hmm. to prove the value in, in a, you know, it's kind of like when you get a, a um, a new cleaning material, and it says use it in the spot that no one will notice if it if right. it uh, you know removes some color. So that that's a, a fairly uh, common scenario that we we see often and, and expect. Yeah, sure, of course. And this you know we're not talking um, minor investment either. So this this makes logical sense. 
uh, from a practical standpoint. Okay, here's the next question. You talk about adding machine learning and AI to augment human interactions so they're high value and focused on the most important customer touch points. What about the smaller carrier with a restricted budget? Where should we begin? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's a uh, a great point. I think that um, two two points on that. Machine learning and AI sound like a big, expensive initiative, and we've all read plenty of articles that say only, you know, uh, Amazon and Google and Microsoft have enough um, budget to actually deploy AI at scale. I think I read that just in the New York Times yesterday, and these articles come out every day. And so there is a sense that how how can AI be accessible to the little guy? Right. Uh, and the the reality is that uh, it is definitely true that if you want to build your own AI practice and your own data science team, uh, I actually have a good friend of mine who leads a, a data science uh, practice at one of the big insurers, uh, and it's very, very difficult for her to, to build the team that she needs um, because, especially here in the San Francisco Bay Area, there's a lot of competition for that talent and not, not much of it. Uh, but the reality is that you don't need to build your own entire practice to get access to this. If you and I, I can't speak to you know every other vendor, but certainly from our perspective at Nuxia, we have in addition to the core ECM, we have a um, a product called Nuxia Insight Cloud, that is an AI uh, service that allows our customers to you know basically enrich content, connect content, uh, better uh, tag and, and and create metadata and relationships among content that they have. That doesn't actually require. Uh, an enormous amount of content in the first place and doesn't require any expertise on their end other than understanding I want to relate X to Y uh, and, and that's usually kind of a, a matter of replicating the intuition of folks. So when I was talking about the, the fact that the workforce is nearing retirement and needing to instantiate what those folks know into AI, what I really meant is before those folks walk out the door, Make sure that you're getting them engaged in initiatives like AI that can essentially replicate their intuitive understanding of how these processes and types of data relate to one another and what tends to predict what. Uh, and with something like Nuxio Insight Cloud, you can get a handle on that relatively uh, easily and inexpensively without having to build any AI expertise in-house. The other point I want to make on this is that although you may think of yourself as a small insurer, compared to an upstart next-gen insurer, you're far from it, right? You, you, you know, I don't know exactly who asked you the question, to be fair, but uh, you know, any any mainline insurance company, even a small one, has you know years and years and years of data and is already well ahead of the game in terms of uh, using that data to its advantage through stuff like AI. Right, Some which is a different. AI. Right, a different aspect than the next gen in insurer who's coming at this with a very fresh start and not much data, right? Correct. So, right. So even the smaller carrier obviously has a shot at this, um, taking a stepped approach. It sounds like it sounds like that's what you're saying. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question. Um, we already have a mobile claims app. Would we need to completely replace it to provide customers? with the type that autofills an FNL and OL. Similar to, I think you were talking about, toward the end of your presentation, you put a claim slide up there, and this question came in right after that. So let me read it again. We already have a mobile claims app. Would we need to completely replace it to provide customers with the type uh, that autofills on first notice of loss? It's very hard to answer that question in a general sense without taking a look at the details, but okay. it's certainly not 100% uh, for sure that you would uh, because if that app is really just a, a skin on some data fields, there's nothing stopping you from you know, pulling in data fields uh, based on you know, data sources that that app is not yet connected to. So if your back end doesn't work well now, so you've built this app sort of as a side project, uh, but you were to get a, take a more platform-based approach uh, and um, you know, connect the app to uh, to to the rest of your kind of customer data estate. There's no reason why you couldn't um, why you couldn't have that pre-populate or autofill on its own. Okay. 
Well, and true, the data is there. I mean, the and the logic-based system is there. It's just a question of um, making that happen, right? If I'm understanding this correctly. It, it's a question of making it happen, but it, the reason it doesn't happen is that that data may be in 17 different silos. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have 14 different, you know, unique IDs that define a customer in each, or 17 different unique IDs in each system. So stitching that together can be really challenging. Right. Um, but if you have, again, a platform approach that uh, that takes care of a lot of that stitching work uh, and a lot of that data management work, then that solves that problem for you. And then now it's just a question of the mobile app pointing to the, you know, single single unique ID or using the you know the email address that somebody's already logged in with or whatever it might be to drive um, a, a search and retrieval of all of the relevant pieces of information. Yeah, right. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, I'm told we're going to need to wrap things up pretty soon. I have time for one more question, though. Here we go. Um, we want to add an automatic resource allocation guided by machine learning to distribute tasks to the best resource based on availability but don't want to replace our legacy policy admin system. What are the alternatives? Do you want me to read that again? Um, we want to add yeah. A, yeah, we want an add, add an automatic resource allocation guided by machine learning to distribute tasks to the best resource based on availability. It sounds like call center stuff, but don't want to replace our legacy policy admin system. What are our alternatives? Okay, uh, great question, and it is not that different from what happens in a call center. Uh, and in fact, it might actually be a call center question, depending on the exact uh, use case that this person has in mind. Uh, I think, it, again, the devil in the details, and we'd have to look more closely at what uh, systems you have today. But in principle, there is no, uh, it's not necessarily required that you replace your past. What you might need to do is that you pull content out of, uh, out of that system in order to make that allocation. Um, you know, you, you pull some variables, how severe is the accident? Was there medical involved? You know, is it in, in this geography or that geography, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you feed that into uh, an engine that can do an automatic resource allocation, and it spits back out a recommendation, send this to Fred or send this to Susan. Uh, but then the actual action of sending it to Fred or sending it to Susan, you then have to take back in the legacy admin system. Uh, or maybe you connect the two with something like uh, resor- uh, like robotic process, process automation. But I, I will uh, be, I, I will suggest a little bit of caution with that, that when you do, when you take an approach like that, you are uh, making the decision in some ways to, um, you know, paper over, right, some of, some of that legacy. Uh, and so if you're making that decision with full, uh, with your eyes open and with the full understanding of the implications that, you know, you're still going to have a legacy system and it's going to still have issues and, and, and uh, you know, you're still going to find uh, things that you don't like about it, then, then that's fine. Uh, if, if you're not at a, in a position where you can do a full um, a revamp today. Uh, okay. But just make sure you're making that decision, you know, eyes wide open, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, good advice. Thank you for that. Well, I'm told we need to wrap things up here. So um, if your question, as a housekeeping note, if your question wasn't answered, um, please note someone from the team is going to be getting back to you. Um, we don't want to have any questions go unanswered. Plus, a link to the slides is available at the bottom of your console and a PDF of the slides is going to be made available to all attendees after the event. I want to thank Uri Kogan for sharing some important high-level insights on a subject that is truly top of mind for the entire insurance industry right now. And on behalf of Digital Insurance and Nexio, I want to thank all of you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody.